this is a picture from Delirium. Delirium was a lab that we made in 2010 <coughs> in Denmark. I was a part of the organizer group. And Delirium was a lab for around 40 participants and it took a weekend and we had two weekends of pre-lab workshops before to prep the participants. Delirium was a lab that was about longing for love and longing for understanding. That was the vision of the lab. And we wanted the players in the game to play what we call close to home. We wanted them to play on emotions and feelings that they have themselves so that the experience they have in game is something profound, something that touches them. We also used uh, a big black box. We had a, a giant hall. It was 40 times 25 meters. So um, it was a very big black box. And we was uh, very inspired by theater, um, theater style and theater aesthetics. Uh, in the props in the game. The game was set at an asylum and we called the genre of the game Asylum Romance. So it was about love and it was about madness. And we didn't want the players to play mad because people playing mad is very difficult to play with. And people playing mad often looks silly. So what we wanted to do was create madness that the players could play in. So they shouldn't play mad themselves, but we would make them mad or feel mad in the setting that we made. The first thing was love. And to support the part of the game that was love, we did a couple of things. First off, the players had to sign up in pairs so you had to invite another player to participate, in, to participate in Delirium with you. So you went on a kind of a lab date. You invited someone to play the game with you. And that would be your closest relation in the game. And of course, a lot of people used off-game relations. Someone they would like to, to uh, date to invite to the game. Other people invited someone that they trusted and they would like to play intimate relations with. Not because they wanted to hit on that person, but because they wanted the trust. But you had to sign up for the game in a pair. Then we used a lot of different meta techniques, tools, to support playing intimacy and playing love. One of them was called Asamandi. And it is a way to portray uh, intimate uh, relations without having sex or kissing. It's about touching arms. I don't know if you've been pre presented to this tool yet. No? But it's about touching arms. Um, and it's a safe way of actually giving and, um, and having intimacy between two players. Yes. And the last thing we did was having these two weekends of workshops before the game. So we built a lot of trust in the group, used a lot of time to get the players to feel safe so that they could get into this room, this madhouse, and play out madness and intimacy. Okay. The next thing we did was trying to portray madness. And we did this uh, in different ways. One of them was using our big black box. This is all of the players at the dinner table <laughs> sitting and eating. And we had six islands of light in the big room that we could control uh, at, the, at a fader. So we could control which rooms were open at which time. The darkness between the islands of light were the delirium. So you could, as a player, at any time, step out into the darkness and feel how your character were fading into madness and out of the scene. We could also, as game masters, cut a scene. Like a normal game master at the tabletop, we could cut a scene and open a new one or play the same again. This also made it possible 
to rearrange scenes. So instead of having chronology, where you started in one end and end in another, we took all the 36 hours of active play and we cut them up into 15 minutes and then we rearranged them. So when they woke up in the morning, they would have dinner. And then afterwards, they would clean up after the birthday party. Later that day, they would have the birthday party. And in the evening, they would prepare the birthday party. So they had no sense of time at all. This is the view from the Game Master area and one of the Game Masters called Andy Norgren um, coined this as reality DJ, that sitting there being able to push all the buttons and do something to your players. We had of course the lights and we had uh, different theater lights. We used white light and red light to portray normal times and mad times and instructed the players in the workshops how to use this and we could shift during the play in the two modes and all the islands of light could turn into white light or red light. Then we also had a sound engineer, theatre sound engineer, that for instance he recorded something happening in one scene. This was one of the scenes that was repeated again and again in, in the game. He recorded the first time it was played and then um, he, uh, he played it again the next time it was played. So that the feeling of coherence or that the scenes melded together. The last thing we did was using red objects. So for instance, a cup with a hole in it I could, as a player, having the red object, see that there was a problem with the cup. But for anyone else, there wasn't a hole in the cup. It was just me not being able to drink. Or there was a big pill, the size of this. And for anyone else, it was just a normal pill. But for me, it was a giant pill. So for anyone else, I had troubles swallowing the pill. And for anyone else, I was just mad. Okay. Um, there was a lot of different methods, but I really want to give the words to Biage, who was one of the players, and have him explain in two minutes how it was to be a player in this. I'll take this picture. This is sort of the activity room you see up on the stage of this big uh, conference hall. Uh, you can see the lamps are hanging in different heights, and that was how we perceived the world, that everything was garbled up and the tables were in various orders, but for the, the doctors who worked at the institution, all the lights, the way they saw it, were like they were in a straight line. And also the dinner table. Um, here, in, in the doctor's mind, the table was one, one table at the same height, but in our mind, it looked like this. And that's how the insanity worked. A great example is from the activity room where we played uh, bingo and the, the janitor started talking about the bingo and, and giving out the numbers 27, 8, 9 and so on. And then the scene faded and then the scene started again and then he did the exact same numbers 27, 8, 9. And when you've done that six or seven times you remember the numbers and it gets really boring and people of course start yelling, we know the next number. And he was like, you sit down, we did this last week, you, you're just insane right now. Just sit and we'll do it again. Then the scene faded and we played it again and again and again and again and again. And that can drive everybody insane. Um, uh, with the red objects, a great example is we got like uh, uh, a steak. Everybody got a cooked steak, except one player who got a raw steak. And that was red, of course, and he wouldn't eat it. So. The janitor came over to him and force fed him the raw steak because he needed to eat the food, but he didn't want to. The player was okay with us, the character not so much. Uh, and that created great intensity. Uh, the players were very focused on, because of the, the time jumps, so you, didn't, you only knew the scene you were in, 
you didn't know what become came before, or you didn't know what came after, because the chronology was switched around, just as, as Christopher said about the birthday party. So you didn't know what comes next, so you couldn't make story progression on this. Uh, and that made sure that you as a player were very focused on delivering the best possible output for that specific scene. So you gave a lot of energy in each scene uh, because that was the only thing you knew. So we were very good at pressuring each other in the game. I think that was it. Thank you. Um, we made a documentary. It's uh, possible to find it here on this address. It's 30 minutes long. Um, and there are also some reactions from the player because uh, this was a very emotional game. So if you want to see for yourself and learn more about the tools, then watch the documentary. <laughs>